We have two scripture lessons today. The first one coming from the book of Psalms, uh, chapter 50, verses 10 and 11. If you care to follow along in the Pew Bible, you can find it on page uh, 520 of the Old Testament. For every wild animal of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the air and all that moves in the fields field is mine. And also from the New Testament, the book of Ephesians, uh, first chapter, uh, verses uh, 8 through 10. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, as he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the course of everyday life, we all are given responsibilities, aren't we? I mean, the responsibilities vary depending upon what we do. Dennis Stewart has responsibilities. He's our church administrator. He's the director of music. He's the organist. And also, he's the worship planner, which I really like that responsibility. But so there are certain things that have to be done. A school teacher has responsibilities, the main one being to educate the children. A firefighter has responsibilities. And they vary depending upon where you're a firefighter. And, you know, in a lot of places, it's to simply fight fires. But in other places, it's to also be there when an accident happens to, to help and give aid in any number of ways. Pastors have responsibility. I was reminding them at 9.30, that when I was ordained, I was ordained to three specific responsibilities. We call them word, preaching the word, sacraments, administering the sacraments, and order, which is keeping the church in its structure and functioning in a smooth and effective way. I don't know why at 9.30 when I said order, they all laughed, but anyway... But what happens when someone fails at that responsibility? Quite often, people react. And sometimes we fall into the trap of lumping everyone in that specific group into that category. For instance, I guess about 20, 25 years ago, I was making a visit at the church where I was serving, I had learned that there was a gentleman in the church that was quite ill. And so I went to see him, and his wife was there, and I went to visit with both of them. And we had a nice visit for about 15 minutes. And then his wife looked at me and she said, you know, you pastors, you're all alike. And I looked at her and she said, all you care about is money. You don't care about my husband. You don't care about his wealth or his health. All you care about is his money, his wealth. I was stunned. She said, you're just like the TV preachers. All they care about is money. You're only here because you want our money. I didn't know what to think, except why am I here? Why am I putting up with this? The reality was she had watched Because her husband wasn't able to get out, she had watched one too many TV preachers. And because of that, she lumped me in with Jimmy Swaggart, Jimmy Baker, Jerry Falwell, Pat Robertson. I was just like them. We were all in one big bag. We do that. You say, well, I don't know, Bob. Maybe we don't. Well, I know we do in a lot of ways. For instance... How many of you would call yourselves Raven fans? Okay, there are a few. Not too many. Okay. But if you're a Raven fan, chances are 
when you talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers, you talk about them in a rather negative way. Now, if you're a Steeler fan, don't go saying, yeah, he's right, way to preach it. Because if you're a Steeler fan, you probably think about Raven fans or Brown fans in the same way. You see, we lump them into one big pack. Now you say, but I know Raven fans or I know Steeler fans that are nice people. I do. They're the exceptions, you know? I mean, isn't that how we think? We lump them all together. We see that happening in our country right now. A few police officers have abused their responsibilities. And because of that, people are saying police officers are bad. That's not fair. Most police officers, I'd say the vast majority of police officers are good, but there are a few that aren't so good. All I can think of as I'm saying this is I remember Michael Jackson singing, one bad apple, don't spoil the whole bunch, girl. Um, but you, you get the idea. I mean, I, this past week, I was just really frustrated and upset about the guy that went to the Ravens game last week and he let somebody in line in front of him and after the game got jumped by two Raider fans and he went to shock trauma in a coma. But there are a lot of people out there that would say, you know, I don't go to ball games because all they are is a bunch of drunks and you, you can get beat up real easy. And guess what? That event from two people out of 71, 72,000 proved their point. So everyone at that game got lumped in the same category. We do it all the time. When you don't fulfill your responsibilities, it's not just bad for you. It's bad for everyone. But we just don't have responsibilities in our workplace or in our sporting events. We also have responsibilities that are part of just being human beings. For instance, on July the 16th, 1983, I took on a new responsibility. Does anyone want to guess what that was? You wouldn't believe I had people say to me, you were ordained. I had someone say to me, that's the day you were assigned to Grace Church. I had someone say to me that that was the, the day, I forget what all they said. Anyone want to take a guess? July the 16th, 1983. I got married, exactly, okay. That's a responsibility. Now, I'm not going to look over this way, but <laughs> have I been faithful to that responsibility every day of my life? Probably not. And the person sitting over there will be glad to tell you how I haven't been faithful to that. On July the 10th, 1995, I took on another responsibility. Anyone want to guess what that was? Adopted the girls. And actually, that adoption took place in Nanchang, Changxi Province, People's Republic of China. That's when that adoption took place. We would later adopt them also here in the United States. And that started a whole new set of responsibilities. Have I been always responsible in that way? No. If you ever see them, ask them, they'll tell you, no. But you work at it. We also have a responsibility, many of us, of being a pet owner. How many of you have pets or have had pets in the past? We have the responsibility of caring for them, of loving them, of treating them with dignity and respect. Sometimes we don't do well at that, and sometimes people don't do well, and it makes the news. If I mention you the name of Michael Vick, what do you think of? Dogfighting. Someone said at 9.30, I was glad to hear it, football player. Because Michael Vick has done whatever he can to reform himself and his image. And yet still when people hear the name, they think of dogfighting. 
because he messed up on that responsibility. You see, folks, God has entrusted us with the care of animals. It's not something to take lightly. In fact, I, and I've talked about this with you before, I get frustrated because many times the people will look at Genesis chapter 1 and use it to do what they want with their pets. Because the writer of Genesis says that God tells us, after God creates us in God's own image, male and female God created us, God goes on to say, that we are to have dominion over the birds of the air and the fish of the sea and the animals that roam the land. Too many times people see dominion as domination over when it's not. When you look at the word that is translated dominion, it really means caretaker or caregiver. We are entrusted with the responsibility of caring for creation. It's who we are. It's what we're called to do. It's who we are called to be. So, when we have those animals, those animals that love us unconditionally, those animals that will crawl up in our laps whether we beat them or hug them, let's remind ourselves that that is a responsibility that God has given to us. Amen.